is electric camping actually practical? In late 2022, I started to experiment in my SUV, replacing traditional camping gear that burns gas with 110 volt household appliances. I made a video back then, but left some questions unanswered. Today, this experiment has been going on for over a year. So I want to make an update to that first video. Is electric camping actually better than gas? How practical is it to set up the electric system? And at last, how much does it cost? And spoiler alert, the whole thing is probably easier than you think. All right, let's get started. The main tasks that traditionally require burning gas are heating related, like cooking or boiling water. In my first video, I did a side-by-side -side comparison of an electric kettle versus a jet boil flash, which was traditionally the fastest way to boil water. But the electric kettle turned out just as fast and it can shut off automatically. It also required no setup and no teardown. After one and a half year, I still very much enjoying the same kettle. In fact, even when I wasn't camping, I use it every day in my house. So it held up pretty well. Meanwhile, my jet boil was never that reliable. But my favorite part is that I can safely use it anywhere, even inside the tent or a car. Lately, I transitioned from a rooftop tent into sleeping inside a car. So if I wake up to a cold, rainy morning, I can simply stay inside and start making coffee. I don't need to worry about gas leaks or catching things on fire. This capability really gives me a very different camping experience. For the same reasons, I also switched to an induction cooktop so I can run it anywhere. In the past, I need to carry a metal table for my gas stove because it will melt any plastic next to it. Induction is also more reliable, especially in the cold, and it is 100% windproof. Recently, I went camping with my friend Chris and Justino. Justino was an outstanding camp chef, and he prepared some steak. Brazilian, uh, cut a steak. It's top sirloin. Oh. But turn out, he ran out of gas. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just Stop saying. recording, guys! Stop! I'm just you're saying. not getting steak. I swear to God, you're not getting steak. <laughs> I am making a video about electric camping. Uh, electric camping. Listen. Fortunately, Chris was full electric. His battery was topped off automatically on our way there. So thanks to Chris, we were able to enjoy Justino's steak. Oh, thank you. Share it around. All right, you take, a, you take one. I want the fat. Give me that. Self-sustaining is another benefit for electric. With a proper setup, which we'll go over later, you'll never need to go to the store for a refill. But Justino's favorite part was actually how easy it was to clean. Because the induction top itself doesn't heat up, you can wipe it clean right after cooking and put it away. Well, I think after this trip, Justino is going electric as well. I need to, I'm, I'm tired of spending money on this goddamn vehicle. I'm not doing it. I refuse <laughs> it's never to do gonna it. End. I know. Of course, Chris had to show off his setup, so he made pressure cooked beef short ribs. Oh my god. Going electric really unlocks infinite possibilities. Yeah. Man, it's full electric, it's man. In my first video, I even joked about running a microwave. And not saying I will, but I can bring a freaking microwave. I'm sure I'll get laughed at on the trail, but I bet you're gonna come ask me to heat up your cold ass sandwiches. But guess what? I actually had one in my FJ for over a year now. And this quickly became one of my favorite gear. Leftover barbecue for a quick launch on the trail. Two minutes. All right, barbecue is here. Oh. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy traditional camp cooking with stoves and pans. It is part of overlanding. But more often than not, I just need to heat something up quick and get back on the road. No setup and no cleanup. 
I mean, how else would you do it without a microwave? Similarly at home, I'm always busy with projects, so I often just get by with junk food, which is pretty bad for my body. Until recently, I came across Factor, the sponsor of this video. Factor helps you eat clean by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Whether I was busy in the garage or overlanding in the wild, I can always quickly enjoy nutritious and great tasting meals. No shopping, prepping, or cleaning up. Factor's menus are updated weekly with 35 different meals, so you always have new flavors to explore. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code TINKER50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's code TINKER50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month of orders. I want to thank Factor for supporting my diet and my channel. Okay, going electric sounds pretty cool, but you will need a fully custom built dual battery system like this, and that's just not practical for everyone. That's what most people believe because they still live in five years ago. But just in the past two to three years, all in one lithium power stations have changed drastically. Even in my first video from late 2022, I said, nevertheless, for hardcore overlanders who do longer trips in more remote areas, I don't think Delta II can replace a true dual battery setup. But now, I would say many power stations are overland worthy, and my setup is almost plug and play. The two key factors are battery capacity and fast car charging. How much capacity one needs obviously depends on many variables. But for the sake of this video, my short and simple answer is 1000 watt hour is the bare minimum, and 2000 watt hour gives me a comfortable full electric experience. I started out with the EcoFlow Delta 2, which was 1000 watt hour. I could run a fridge, use the electric kettle a couple times, and run the electric blanket overnight. But if I were to add cooking, then you'll start to get pretty tight. After I switched to a Delta II Max with 2000 watt hour, I could run everything willingly and not worry about running out. Now, this capacity rule of thumb has one big caveat. It only gets you through one day, and you had to recharge it back to 100 the next day before you set up camp again. This works for me because I typically drive every day for my trips. But on the other hand, Chris you met earlier like to do beach camping, where he may stay at the same spot and cook fancy food for a large group. So he has near 6000 watt hour of capacity and it was a custom built system, which was indeed a lot of work. Adding solar would help, but as I show in my solar roof video, solar is not reliable enough to be your own power source. It is only a nice supplement. So for real overland trips, fast car charging is utmost critical. Most power stations, including my Delta II Max, could only charge at 100 watt from the car. At that rate, you will run out of juice after a couple nights. And this has been the biggest weakness of power stations. But fortunately, back in March 2023, I discovered a reliable way to fast car charge at 400 watt using a Victron DC to DC converter. I made a video explaining how, and I will link it in the description below. The DC converter is the only thing that requires wiring, and it is only two pairs of wires. It is almost plug and play, so everyone can do it. Another practical benefit of power stations over dual battery is the flexibility. You can easily relocate it as your setup evolves. Initially, I mounted my power station in this pocket next to my drawers. But later, I give up one of my drawers to mount the fridge up here. So I relocate the EcoFlow back here and mounted a microwave on top. And recently, because I transitioned to sleeping inside the car, I had to rearrange my setup again. 
I switched to an eTaker M2000, which is much more compact than my EcoFlow. This is the only way I can mount 2000 watt hours down here. If it was a custom built dual battery system, that would take a lot more work to move around. So how much does a setup like this gonna cost? This is where you should appreciate market competition. When I made the first video, the 1000 watt hour Delta II cost 999 US dollars. But today, the Delta II is selling for 649 because competition has caught up. The Victron DC converter I use is 140 bucks from Amazon. So for 800 bucks, you can already convert most tasks to electric. If you double the price, you can get double the capacity with the Delta II Max. But you are getting more than just capacity. The Delta II Max has higher power output, so I was able to run multiple things all at once, which can be useful. The Delta II Max also have two DC inputs, so I can use one for the DC converter and the other one for my 400 watt solar panel. And not until recently, power station brands finally took notice of the demand and released their own car charging solutions. These are essentially DC converters, but they give you more capabilities. This EcoFlow alternator charger can do up to 800 watt, and it can reverse charge your starter battery. This eTaker Fleet 1000 can do up to 1000 watt. It has dual independent input, so you can either do 1000 watt all from the alternator, or 500 from the alternator and 500 from solar. I included the links to these products in the video description, but you do need to pay attention to your alternator because my FJ's factory alternator cannot spare 800 watt. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.